Hi, I'm here to talk to you about the V20 Smart Access Module. So let's talk about the few things that it has. Um, it actually lets you communicate to a V20 through a web browser. All you have to do is connect to it. So let's go to the next page. As you can tell, you just take this module and you stick it on the front of the V20. And once you get onto your computer, all you have to do is go to your Wi-Fi hotspot and or on your cell phone. You would click your, your Wi-Fi settings and then you would look for the V20 Smart Access. Then you just would press connect. Um, by default, the password would be one two three four five six seven eight. Then once you get onto it, you have to re-password it. So for security reasons. So right now I've already done that and I've changed it to A W C dash nineteen sixty five. Now I'm connected. And as you can tell, once you open up a web browser, you would have to type in this IP address, 192.168.1.1. So since I already have this PDF open, it's just going to open up a web, web browser for me. All right, now that I have the 192.168.1.1 in here, here's the front screen once you get onto the V20. There's quick commissioning, parameters, jog, uh, monitoring, diagnostics, and backup and restore. And if you look on the top right, there's your faults that are going on. Right now I'm plugged into a 110 circuit, so it doesn't have enough DC voltage to run the drive. So this is just for testing purposes. So let's go to the quick commissioning and look at that. You want to start quick commissioning? Yeah. This would be your typical motor nameplate that you have to put into the drive to be able to commission it. And then you can go to your how you're going to control your control macro, so from BOP, fixed speed, from push buttons, whatever that might be. Next would be your application macro. This is uh, how you set it up for like a pump or a fan conveyor. Next would be your, like how fast are you wanting this VFD to ramp up or ramp down. So let's mess with the ramp down time. So as you can tell, you click on it and it kind of tells you generally what it's about, and you can either scroll this over, which adds time to it or moves it, or you could physically click on the number itself, and then there's a little keyboard that shows up. Let's just put it like 10 seconds. And you would just press down, and then you're done. So next, it's going to say, hey, you done with quick commissioning? Have you set up all your parameters right? Yeah. Now it's going to send it to the drive. All right, success. Uh, another thing that you can do is go to parameters. And here's the whole list of parameters that you can look at. Um, one good thing is you could type in keywords um, like 971. That would be something that I use all the time, which is save RAM to ROM. So I just typed in 971. It found it right away. Also, when you click on the parameter itself, it shows you what it can do. Start transfer, start transfer, user transfer. So it kind of describes everything for you. So you don't have to really pick up a manual. So let's just press OK. Successful. Once it's done. So let's go back up. There's either two. There's two arrows. There's the little three lines, which kind of brings you to the overview of all the things. Or you can press exit, and then you can press the up arrow, which brings you back to your home screen. There's another feature on here, which is jog. This is how you can control the drive via your phone or your PC. The only problem with this is when you're in this screen, when you do press get control, this makes it take over uh, how it's going to be controlled. So you're not going to be able to control it from your push buttons, only from whatever you're connected to with the Wi-Fi. So OK. So right now I can press hand. And if I press start, it'll try to run, and then there'll be a fault because I don't have the right voltage. It's not a big deal. But right now, I can't get out of here since I have control. So I could click all I want, but I'm not going to be able to get out of here. So I need to stop this motor and then free up the control. So that's a good thing. It makes you stop before you can get out of the screen. So that's a good thing. So now I can just, if up here, I see that there's another fault that came up. So I could just click on that, and it brings me straight to my fault screen. So under voltage, under voltage.
because of my line. So that is this actual the diagnostic screen, which I just got to go to, same thing. While we're on the diagnostic screen, let's look at a couple things. There's the acknowledge fault, which will acknowledge any faults that are active that have been cleared. Um, there's another thing that you can do is you can click this little toggle button, which should show your past alarms that are that are that went on that you've already accepted. If you click on the second dot right here, it'll bring you actually to your analog inputs, your analog outputs, your digital ins and digital outs, and it'll actually show the status of what they are currently. So like right now, my DOs are on because it's ready to run and it's not faulted. So you click this third dot, which is actually your status bits, which is for like your Modbus communication and your USSS communication. So you can see every single bit. So this is really good for when you're actually troubleshooting any USS protocol. So that's one of the good things about this. The other thing is with the fault screen right here on the first part, you can actually click on this under voltage and it'll actually say, hey, why don't you see if there's a main supply failure? Well, there is because it's plugged into a 110. Let me go back up and there's another screen called monitoring. This is where you could look at all the set points and everything that's going on inside the drive, DC voltage. So right now, 150, not good for a drive. It should be 600 at least. So one last thing that I want to show you is the backup restore. And as you can tell, you can, you can either rename the file to whatever you want or just today's date. Like you can type in AWC test. But one caveat to this is you can't put any spaces in between. It kind of gets mad. So you need to make sure it's all together. And then you just press backup. Simple. This will take a little bit. So I'm going to speed up. And it was successful. Now you can either just press OK or you could press download which actually brings up the screen for a XML file that it actually looks at. But if you just press OK, it actually saves it to the smart access module itself. I haven't figured out how many files it saves to it. I need, I need to research that a little bit, but I'm just trying to get this, uh, this smart access module out so y'all can see it. So now if you go down here on this, this second dot, that's gonna be where you would restore to the drive, so see? AWC test, and this is one that I did with uh, Elizabeth Ayres. Uh, it, it's still on there, and she did it with her cell phone, so that's the reason why I'm like, I don't really know if it's saved on the module, where does it save? So if I go to AWC test, and I just press restore, it's now transferring all the parameters that was on the drive back to it. So this is one good thing, so if you have multiple drives that are doing the same thing, you could back it up, then restore it to five different drives, and it's going to be the exact same as long as the exact same configuration. And that's about it for Smart Access. Uh, if you have any other questions, please give me a holler or anything like that. All right. Thank you, guys.